And most importantly, my wonderful guest, Mr. John Zappas. How are you this evening? I'm uh, doing good. How you doing? Good, good. Um, good. I know I'm cheesing, but I'm a little excited and happy that you're with us tonight. <laughs> so, well, glad to be here. I am I'm so excited. Thank you so much. Um, you know, like I was before we came on, I was telling John I could probably talk to him for like days about everything that he's accomplished. So I kind of want to like get into it a little bit, you know, instead of you know. BSN and whatever, but um, I just, I, I want to just, because there's probably so much that we could talk about and, um, but anyways, I want to, I want to get into it. Um, I finally was able to put my big girl pants on and ask uh, John here to come on my show um, for a really long time. I have wanted to, and I was <laughs> nervous <laughs> and um, he, you are literally, you really took all that like nervousness away in like the one second that we were talking. I mean, you're just, you're awesome. And I, and I appreciate you for being so kind and, and open and welcoming. And, you know, I mean, it was literally one of the easiest shows I could schedule. So I, I thank you for that. First of all. Oh, well, you're welcome. You're very welcome. I know, you know, you and I, we could talk a little bit about that because here again, it's talking a little bit about the things we don't. Oh my gosh, you got a lot of the, the old timers uh, coming on here. A lot of people I know here. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, yeah, it said to me that you felt a little intimidated and, yeah. you know, talking or approaching. And I went, why? And, you know, and you and I were talking and I go, you know, and I was telling you, don't do that with people, you know, approach somebody, you talk to somebody. They don't want to talk to you. Pfft, the heck with them. That's how I look at it. Because <laughs> you know, I I am very fascinated by uh, a lot of very famous people and stuff like that. And if I seen them or something, I would you know, hey, talk to them as go. You know, I like this or I like that. And if they didn't want to talk or something, I'd be like, oh, no biggie, and I would walk yeah. away. So yeah, yeah. Eh, best way no. to look at it. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. And and uh, honestly, like that that intimidating or the intimidation just literally went away the second we started talking. I mean, you were just. You're, it felt like I knew you for years, you know? I mean, I have known you, but know you know, you know? So I appreciate <laughs> that. So let's get into it. Let's get into, let's get into, let's get into stuff. Um, at, you know, if, for those of you that are watching, I mean, I'm sure you guys are all here because you know who John Zappas is, but um, I want to get into like the beginning and how you got into what you did and, you know, doing more like, you know, there's not a lot of people out there that I, you know, they'll say they're demonologists and stuff like that, but you never know a hundred percent, you know, you know, all this, you know, if they're telling the truth, cause people just add stuff to their, their titles nowadays, you know? Um, oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I kind of just want to start at the beginning and we can just take the conversation as it goes, whatever comes up. Um, <laughs> You know, um, I know you got started young. Yeah. Um, and go ahead. You 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 go ahead. Take the floor. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, how I really uh, got in, I got involved with it or anything, believe it or not, I was not a believer as a kid. But when I was 15, 16, you know, um, uh, at that point in time is when everything changed. Now, my grandmother had lived with us. My mother's uh, mom. Now, Ed and my mom were twins. A lot okay. of people never knew that, but yeah. they were very, very, very different people. You know, you said ghost to my mother, she'd start freaking crying. She <laughs> did. She wanted not. She she was petrified of the paranormal. She really was. Yeah. So, anyways, uh, at one point in time, you know, 
I went down. It was a Wednesday night, and I, I was telling my mom. I said it was a figure at the foot of my bed. It was shaking its head back and forth. And she just looked at me. She goes, "Well, did it say or do anything?" And I said, "No, it just shook its head." She goes, "Well, Johnny, that that was your grandfather, my father." And I go, "Well, Ma, how do you know that? Yeah, you know, like that." And she goes, "He never would really say too much. He was a very stern man, and he would just always shake his head back and forth." But what triggered the whole thing was my grandmother passed away a few days afterwards. Oh, so that made me start to think because you you know we would always hear all these stories about deceased loved ones coming back when to help somebody cross over and you know move forward and. Again, that made me really think, I went, there's got to be something to this. Right. So, you know, then, you know, my mother said to me, she goes, well, make sure you tell my brother. So when, because now they lived about 20 minutes north of us. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times when my mom would cook stuff, she would say, go bring it up to him. Right. Now you got to remember, I grew up in that time framing when, in, when I was 15 years old and, you know, we had our permit. We were allowed to drive all over the place. Yeah, you know, I was a very good driver by the time I turned 16. <laughs> so, <laughs> driving all over when I was 15. But right. anyhow, I would bring food up, drop it off. And a lot of times it would be just, you know, hey, we're going to go work, do this or go do that. You want to go with this? I'd be like, yeah, that'd be cool. And mm -hmm. I would go with them, yeah. you know, and uh, get involved and see different things and witness different things. And it, it, it was, you know cool and, and interesting like that so and did, my mom, did you start ahead. off when they were taking you was it was it was it always the, the negative cases and stuff like that that you were no. seeing? okay no yeah it a boundary of different things that's the only way i could put it to you cool. i mean you know we'd go work on cases you know especially if there was something local there's one case we worked on and it had to do with the uh the little girls remember the tin uh, doll houses they used to have in the 50s. Yeah. Okay, yeah. it had to do with that, and they, it was causing a haunting. I worked on another case with them, just went with them. A woman collected these little uh, statues. She bought this one and added it to the collection. She claimed it was moving and everything like that. So, you know, uh, Ed and Lorraine had taken it out, and we were driving back home, and my uncle throws it into the back seat of the car. He goes, you want that kid? I go, what the hell am I going to do with that? You know, <laughs> and, but what it ended up doing was basically getting me to think about it. And he would do this with a lot of stuff. So, you know, what did I do back in that time framing was went and picked up books because we didn't have the internet. We didn't right. have stuff. We had nothing. So then I would go up, you know, I go, you know what? I picked a couple of books up and I can't get over the different haunted items out there. And he would just start laughing. But, you know, later on in life, I looked at it and I went, he used to do that on purpose because he knows I would go poke to see what I could find out. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. and that's what intrigued me. That's what got me going. And one of the most famous, notoriously known haunted items, and people never really stop to think about it, is the Hope Diamond. Think about that. You know, again, it, we call it, it's alleged to be cursed, but again, it's still considered a haunted item. Really? I never knew that that was considered a, a cursed item. The Hope Diamond, absolutely, Whoa. yeah. The last Whoa. person that purchased it uh, had to. Oh, yeah, look up the story is phenomenal. Oh wow! All the, never yeah, heard it. everybody never heard that it. had it, anybody that purchased it was you know very wealthy people, and all kinds of tragedies would happen. This last millionaire purchased it and donated it. I believe it was a Smithsonian, so that it would never cause any problems for anybody else. Wow! So yeah, it's pretty. It's, it's a pretty cool story. Real, wow. real cool story. So, but um, I mean, there's there are things out there that, you know, you, that have been around that were haunted that people just never heard about. A, a chair over in England, people sat in it and they would die. Wow. So, yeah. And it was in a local pub. So it was pretty cool and, you know, pretty interesting. Do to, you think that's, that's why you then years later, Haunted Collector was kind of a, like, that's what you just started doing? Because that was one of the first things that you were doing when you started, you know, working with your aunt and uncle and stuff like that? Like, see? No. Uh, what, it, what ended up happening was that uh, it was supposed to be similar to uh, American Pickers. Oh, you know, uh, okay. like uh, Frank and okay. Mike. We're, we're yeah, supposed to yeah. do something like that. Then okay. it evolved into what it was because as we started talking and getting involved with different things and, you know, it just kept evolving, evolving. So we 
that, and the final result, which happens with a lot of the shows, not just paranormal ones, but all of them. But no. anyhow, it, it, it got into all that, and that's what came out of it. So it, it was interesting because it broke ground because I was the first person to ever do that. Yeah. And I knew, I knew, I kept saying it's going to be very controversial. And, you know, people are going to go, you know, make all kinds of stuff up like they do with everything. Right. But, wow, look at it today. Everybody collects haunted items. Right. You know, different people do different things with them. So it really developed into uh, quite the industry. I'm friends with several people that collect haunted items, you know, and it's cool because it's got to continue. It's still got to yeah. go on. Yeah. So, you know, I help them out every once in a while, you know, some of them and uh, do what I can out there to uh Keep that going and watch that legacy just keep going and going with haunted items. The show, was, the show was great. I used to watch it. I remember too. The stick out of my mind was when you guys found the pistol under the front deck. Um, yep. That was that was cool. And then there was another one. I might. I I don't know if I remember what the item like exactly what it was, but I feel like you guys found either a necklace or a bracelet or a pendant somewhere in the house. Oh. Uh, there was one in a fire station that was a pendant. If a brooch type um, thing, if I'm oh, remembering maybe that's correctly. What it was. Maybe yeah, that's it was in the upper was. part of the five, uh, bedrooms and stuff. So yes. that that might be the one. Yeah, yeah but yeah. It, you know, it was cool and everything. We did it for three years, and you know, by the end of three years, everybody was tired, and you know, everybody wanted to take a break and everything like that, which was cool and, and stuff like that. Then it came back in reruns. Which, you know, I busted out laughing on Travel Channel because I started hearing from the executives and everything and going, you're getting better numbers now in the reruns than you did when it originally aired. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that was cool. That was super yeah. cool. And it kept the, you know, it, it kept people a little bit interested in it. So that awesome. was cool. It yeah. was a good show. It was a good show. Oh, thanks. Um, good people on it, too. Yeah. No, yeah. It was, it was awesome. I mean, it, 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 you know, you guys did get some good evidence and you never really think about that part because a lot of the places you guys would go like there were already teams that have gone in there to try to help people and this and that and this stuff just yep. continued you know yep. so i mean i thought that was an interesting approach you know um and and it solved a lot of the solved a lot of the people's issues which was a good thing um see that that's important i'm glad you're bringing that up yeah. because you know not only is it a you go in and you investigate, but you want to try to find some type of resolution. It's not about continuously going back and going back at EVPs, getting pictures, getting this, getting that. So I know a lot of people do that. And to me, I, I don't know. I've never been like that. I like to go in, find out what's going on. Okay, do they want closure? Do they want to move forward in breaking the cycle of it? Or do they want to continue it? Which is a very, it's a very popular thing today. A lot of people like having haunted houses. Yeah, you know, that's, that's true. Okay. That, that's perfectly fine. Yep. Yeah. But, you know, uh, a lot of people don't. A lot of investigations that I do that are residential today, a lot of them don't even, they don't want to talk about it. They don't want nobody to know about it. And I'm like, you know, pe people really just don't care. Then you got the other people I'll go to help and they get uh, uh, aggravated because I don't have a film crew with me. <laughs> Where's the film crew? And I'm like, oh, well, wow. do you want, yeah, do you want help or, yeah, you know, do right. you, you know, which is it? Oh. Then we'll take it from there. Then as, as all as they want is that, you know, to get it verified or something that there's something going on. All right, fine. As long as you're up front with me, I'm, I'm cool with that. I don't do care. You, do you, is there certain criteria, John, that you will go in yourself or do you have people that, you know, help you and will go in, you know, if, you know what I mean? Like, do you, do you, do certain cases take precedence where you're like, okay, I got to go to this place myself. Okay. What uh, today, well, not really necessarily just today, but you know, since Ed went down, a lot of things uh, had shifted over the years where a lot of different clergy members that he would work with started contacting me and I would start working with them. And there's still a few that are still alive, you know, and I still help them out or some of the people that they've trained, I help out. And those are types of situations where I'm very careful and guarded because not just necessarily priests, but other spiritual people, even, you know, Native American, yeah. you know, shot, shot. they don't want all these paranormal people around. They don't want to get involved with a lot of that. Yeah. So will I go in, do what I need to do to find out, get a hold of them and say, hey, you know, a lot of times they'll refer me and say, 
Johnny, will you check it out for me to see if it's legit or not? I'll gladly do that for them. Yeah. And, you know, you get it resolved. You do what you have to do. And they go back in and do their things. Everything gets done. Kumbaya, everybody moves on. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to I'm going to divulge this information. I don't know if I'm allowed to or not, but I'm not I won't give specifics. However, um, <clears throat> I have been a part of a, a research or a, 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 I guess a research and like a, a, an edu or, a, you know, like a, a project for uh, a couple of people uh, uh, for skeptics where I'm getting mailed a haunted object for haunted objects, supposed, you know, haunted objects. I have to put it in my house. You know, and I have to just every day I have a notebook and every day I have to write if anything in the end, if, if my house has changed, if the energy feels different, if there anything has happened, mm -hmm. um, you know, and <clears throat> I have a tough time with clowns, as do a lot of people. Um, and the first item was that. And then the second item was like just a little car. Yes, mm -hmm. thank you. I wasn't sure if I was allowed to say <laughs> this is, Who the is it? That's he's the one running this. There's four of us. Um, oh, that's interesting. I didn't know that. Only one is alleged to be haunted. So there's four items. We keep it. At, there's, I think there's four people involved with this that they mail. Cool. To cool. And, and we all switch. We don't know who the other people are. And yeah. I get one item and then the next, you know, and we have it for a month and we're writing down anything that's happened or occurred and we mail it back and we, and once, yeah, four people, he says, yeah. And then once we get all back, they're going to they're going to put all the data together, everything that we've we've said, and you know, what I mean, and see and see what they get. So I thought all four of them were alleged haunts. Only one is. Right now, I have a little Buddha right. and I'm like, I can't be upset about a Buddha. They're supposed to be good luck. Right. So. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're supposed to be. But you also have to remember with certain things. Now, to me, I put the. I, I have uh, several different Buddhas and there's energy attached to it, but it doesn't mean it's negative. I don't look at it that way. But what I do look at it is that, okay, that Buddha, somebody might've picked it up, brought it in their house and it just started activity yeah. got kicked in because it could have been used, you know, as a main focus for a person's belief system, you know, their belief system and things of, you know, that nature. And it triggered, energy and triggered a haunting so thus you know looking at it you know from yeah. uh, those different uh perspectives yeah. so again it, possibility but again it see you know people i laugh people say oh i don't like going to any antique malls or stores or anything because 99 percent of the antique malls out there don't have anything in them we deal with the ones that do. I know people, their houses are loaded with antiques. They've never had a problem. Not me. So, I'm, a, yeah. I'm an antiquer. I yeah. really am. Yeah. So, again, I look at it very openly with a lot of things, and I'll go, you know, it's not unusual. We end up dealing with the things where, you know, there's uh, issues, there's problems, and, you know, Hi, Lords. Congratulations, <laughs> Grandma. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> so, you know, it's always cool like that when everybody, all your friends just start going on again. Yeah. I love it. So yeah. again, you know, but see, now you never thought of, to think about it that way about the Buddha, did you? No. Oh, yeah. like, now this, now the energy in my house might shift. <laughs> 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 yeah. I mean, I have, I have some pretty, pretty cool. Like, like I have a, um, I have a, um, a bayonet. Mm -hmm. a bayonet has been like I know I, I remember reading that they used to stamp when they went into wars and stuff like that. So it is stamped a lot. Okay. And there's stains all over it. I, I don't want to clean it. I don't want to do anything with it. No, don't, don't. Hanging on my wall with um a Civil War certificate mustering this uh, a lieutenant into the Civil War from New Jersey. Um, so I have it on display and stuff like that. And I've never gotten it looked at or anything, like that, but I've never had anything that I know. I've never had anything bad come up from it. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, and and a yeah. lot of people. I remember somebody held it one time. And they were like, "Oh, this has like a lot of. There's like a lot of death on here, you know." And you don't know. I mean, people could just say that, you know. And so you try not to let that get into your head because if it gets into your head, and you take it into your house, you're like, "Oh my gosh," you know. Power, like, power of suggestion. Yep. Yes, yep. Yeah. You yeah. know. Um. 
do you do your cases tend to be more the on the side of the power of suggestion or do you find that a lot most of your cases are like legit and they come to you and you know you actually find something that is an issue i'd say it's about 50 50. i um because i i again i this comes from uh, the foundation of being taught and whether it's a case or an item, a house, land, the uh, things occur. And I still can remember sitting down one day with my uncle and I go, the house isn't haunted. And he goes, but that doesn't mean there isn't an issue going on. And I would look at him and go, well, what do you mean? He goes, John, if somebody believes strong enough that they got a haunted item, or a haunted house, it's going to be haunted. Right. He said, not necessarily legitimately, but they're going to believe that it's happening. They're, they, you know, and again, he goes, so never go in and start telling people, no, you're not experiencing something not, and it's not happening or it's not a haunted item. He said, because you don't really know that. We have no way of knowing those things. Well, I mean, a little bit better now with right, our right. equipment and stuff but again always uh look at it with that perspective well okay you know you might go into a, an investigation three or four different times and you might not have nothing happen boom you can go back one other time and you could have all kinds of activity you know start to occur right so it's now it's like that with with the haunted items too because a lot of my medium friends and psychic friends like that i love when they touch the things they come over and they, you know, say, well, you know, I go, yeah, knock your socks off. I, I'm curious to see what you get. Yeah. And, you know, and if they pick up on something or something's related to them, I would tell them. And then if, you know, they're totally out to lunch on it, I tell them that too. And I go, it's got nothing to do with that. I don't know what you're picking up on, but it has nothing to do with that. I, I won't exactly say it like that, but. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But again, you know, it's. The nature of it when, when it comes into, I you know, again, I say paranormal, but really the supernatural, the unknown. Right. Yeah. yeah. No, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, going, going back to mom real quick, that whole, I know I kind of cut you off there in a moment, but I, no, I, no. I wanted to ask too, like, you know, when you went to her with that appearance, because she was afraid of the, you said she was afraid of it. Petrified. Um, and I was too, before I had my first experience, I was too, I wanted nothing to do with it. I was in, I was like, I would watch the shows and I would read stuff and look up stuff, but I slept with my room, my back to my room, a nightlight on, you know, the music playing. So I didn't hear, see, feel, I didn't want to, I didn't want to have an experience. I was scared. Mm -hmm. And um, so when you went to her, um, was she frightened that you saw that? Oh yeah. Did freak her out. But then did yeah. you know that it was, it was her fault. It was her father. Correct. Her father. Did, did she feel better that like, did no. that, Oh, she no. Want, oh, no, no, no. She didn't want nothing in the house. <laughs> Fa family or not, she didn't want, want no dead people in the house. Yeah, <laughs> and, and she would say, I don't want nothing in here. I don't I don't want to deal with any of this. And that, oh. you know, because I, I have a wicked sense of humor. I always have. And I turned to look at her, I go, but that's your father. And she goes, I don't care who it is. I don't want them here. <laughs> and then, you know, she did say to me, she said, that's a bad omen. That's a bad omen. And I go, well. Why are you saying it's a bad omen? I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. Then my grandmother passed away. So I, you know, I thought about it afterwards on how she related to it. Yeah. You know what I mean? She yeah. took that as a sign that something was getting ready to happen. Yeah. You know, but I mean, you didn't have to be psychic to know my grandmother was getting ready to pass away. She was dying from cancer, but right, right, know, right. Again, yeah, yeah. It, it's the nature of it. Yeah. You know? Did she, did something happen to where it, like she, she got. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. When her and Ed were little, they lived in a haunted house. So, yeah. And they would hear a guy coming up the stairs. They would hide under their beds and they would get freaked out and all these crazy things would happen. My uncle used to talk about it all the time when they were kids, they live in a haunted house. And, but that encouraged him to go get involved with the paranormal and it scared her to death where she wanted nothing to do with it. So it, it was weird. Yeah. And you know, yeah. I, I would even say to her at different times, I go, Ma, what exactly? I don't want to talk about it. I, and she would start crying and she'd go, go ask my brother, go ask my brother. And she wouldn't talk about it. Wow. She would not. 
And it was the craziest thing because I would say to my uncle, I go, you know, I asked her and she won't tell me anything. He would start laughing. He goes, oh, she's a big baby. She's scared of all this shit. So, <laughs> and that's exactly what he would say. Because oh. it was one time we were, you know, all there and we were uh, talking and he looked at her and he goes, hey, he goes, why won't you tell the kid about what we went through when we were kids? And she was like, shut up, Warren, because that was his real name. She was just like, shut up, Warren. Don't even bring it up. And oh. all of us would bust out laughing. We would just start laughing. Oh my god, that's yeah. great. Yeah, so that's interesting though. That 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 those two, you know. So how did she feel when you started working with your uncle? Okay, this is where it, it was kind of strange and weird, because my uncle always said that I was. He always felt that I was going to get involved with the paranormal. I, <laughs> how the hell he knew it? But uh, so, anyways when I started doing that and I'd go with them and everything like that, you know, she would get upset and, you know, blah, 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 and stuff like that. Then one day I, we were just talking and I was going back and forth. And, um, you know, I said, well, my, I think, you know, I'd like to do some of this stuff. And she got very quiet and she looked at me. She says, well, she says, if you're going to do it, I'd rather you're with my brother than anybody else. So I looked and I went, wow. I went, you know, because she had such an intense look on her face yeah. with the whole thing, you know. And such a passion, you know, against like not wanting anything, you know what I mean? Not anything. I mean, I'm sure, you know, Ed probably, you know, told her stuff that happened along the years, you know what I mean? And stuff that could happen or stuff that's happened to him or things. Oh, yeah. Him, yeah. You know, yeah, what I mean? no. for her to have such an infinity for how she felt about it and then for her to say, Go ahead, you know, like, you know, I'd, I'd rather. And, and that's very smart of her as well. Well, because she, well, I was a crazy kid in the 70s anyways. She knew I was going to get involved with something. She wanted to make sure I didn't end up getting involved with, you know, anything <laughs> too crazy or too wild. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you know, again, um, she knew I was going to poke around with it. And she knew he would at least try to keep me a little bit on the straight and narrow on what I got involved with. <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, you know, you could have a worst passion or addiction you know what i mean it, you know yeah. other than, and doing this you know what i mean and yeah you know um so okay so you know what there's a couple questions in in there that were people were so let me let's just get to those really quick um and then we can get back to talking um okay. is john still planning to open a museum with his haunted items i hope so I, I keep looking, I keep searching. The biggest problem is, you know, people say, well, you know, go out in the outskirts or something like that. We, when you open up a type of business like that, that's a touristy type uh, attraction thing. So it's got to be in an area where, you know, people are going to come to it. Now, unfortunately, with that comes along the price tag. Now, Mystic, Connecticut is one of my most favorite places. I've been looking and looking for years and years, but it's millions of dollars to buy a piece of property in some of these places. Yeah. You know, so I, I, I have uh, two realtor friends. One, uh, I, oh, she's a sweetheart. She sends me so many pieces of property. The other thing is uh, you have to also realize uh, with that, you have to go through zoning. You have to go through, you know, the town, town meetings. You get one person that bunks something, you're shut right down. It, yeah. it doesn't matter. Yeah. You know, again, well, if it's a commercial piece of property, you should be able to do whatever you want. No, yeah. you can't. You just can't do whatever you want. You have to go through zoning, get licensed and everything else. So I mean, and but, how do you, how do you like, how do you have any documented paperwork and something like that on haunted items, you know, and, and then presenting that to a bunch of professional people that are, you know, like. <laughs> I, I, this, this is hysterical. This one about two years ago, it was an antique mall, right? But they had a lot of open areas and one of the floors was open and he was renting out. The, and I was like, how cool would that be? Right. Yeah. So I was going through the process. One of my buddies hooked me up with all me, knew him. And I'm on the phone talking to him and everything. And he says to me, he goes, well, what is it? You know, the type of business that we're talking about and everything like that. I go, well, haunted items. He goes, excuse me. He goes, <laughs> he goes Haunted, I said haunted items, things that I removed and I explained everything to him. He was real quiet and he goes, oh, he said, I don't think I could allow that in the mall. And I go, why? He goes, that might affect my other tenants. I might get sued. Um, and I went, 
wow. <laughs> like, okay, you know, here goes a whole new ball of wax hair now, right? Yeah. I mean, so yeah, it, it, it's amazing that, you know, uh, a lot of different things occur in that. But I'm still looking, I'm currently looking at a couple of other pieces of property that just got uh, sent over to me by uh, uh, the young lady that uh, she keeps looking and, you know, great person looking at pieces of property for me. So I keep looking, about, hopefully. Do you ever think about just like maybe, and, and I'm, you know, forgive me, I'm not, you know, but like you know, maybe buying a small piece of land and building like, like, like a, like something, you know what I mean? That would, would outfit your stuff. Would you, yes. You, and you still have to get, you still, you have to go through, I, cause I checked into two pieces of property that were very reasonable. They were commercial pieces of property. And I went to zoning and to check on the regulations and everything. It, the piece of property alone was a couple hundred thousand dollars, but between the rules and regulations for putting the building up, it would have cost me a million dollars just to put up a uh, Oh, wow. brick, and mor brick and mortar, four wall building. You have to do a sprinkler system. You have to do this. You have to, it was like, I just, my mind was mind boggled over wow. the restrictions and everything that they have today. I mean, geez, whatever happened to the good old days, somebody would just, you know, throw a building up and open up and, you know, <laughs> and open, have a store. You can't do stuff like that no more today, but. I mean, you yeah, you want to do it in Connecticut, right? So you would never look outside of the state. Like, what if the rules I have, are different? Oh, okay. No, I, I have. You know, again, I've uh, I've looked in Virginia. Um, I've looked in North Carolina. Uh, several several other places too, but in the commercial areas where you know people are going to go, and you're going to be able to attract people. Okay, perfect example here is like Zach Bagans. His museum is one of the biggest tourist attractions in Las Vegas. Oh, perfect, okay. perfect yeah. location, perfect environment, perfect everything. So therefore, you know, smart move on his part that he was able to do it there and, you know, uh, get it to rock and roll. So mm -hmm. again, that's what I'm saying. There's so many different ways to look at things and the way things have to be put together. But hopefully before I turn into a ghost, I'll get it done. <laughs> well, well, that's interesting. You should you should say that because Megan, one of my peaches, says, "What item would John want to haunt when he passes?" <laughs> uh, I don't really think there's anything I want to haunt. You know, it, it's a running joke with me because everybody says, "Oh, you're going to make one of the best ghosts out there," and everything. I says, "I hope not." And they'll go, "Well, why do you say that?" I go. Are you freaking kidding me? I've been doing this for 50 some odd years. You think I'm interested in haunting anything? I don't want to be bothered. <laughs> what about a place? What about a place? I, you know, again, too, and like everybody says, yeah, if you think we're going to let you rest, you're out of your freaking mind. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. So, you know, it's a uh, I can't running imagine joke all the all spirit box sessions that'll come out after that. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I know. Believe me, I'm not. A, I I don't I don't use them, and I don't. That, that's, okay. that's okay. It'll still keep me relevant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen, you're a legend and an icon. You're me always you, you've left the legacy behind, you know, and, and, and you, you've you've done so much for the field, first of all, and uh, that you'll you'll always be relevant no matter what. And that's my opinion. You know. Thank thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, John, can you sense if something is attached to an object? Yes. Now, do, do I consider myself a psychic or a medium or anything? No. Because a running joke with me is, you know, when somebody says that to me, if they, if they put their hand out and read my palm, give me a reading. I bust out laughing because, I, you know, I, I wouldn't be any good at it or anything like that. I mean, I'll joke around sometimes and go, <gasps> I can't tell you what I just saw. And they'll go, Jay! <laughs> yeah, but I don't see it. <laughs> but, I, you know, all joking aside, I, you do develop that sense when you go in to haunted locations, you get creeped out. You pick up, you know, different types of vibrations. It's the same thing, you know, when I walk in uh, two different places and I'll look at something and go, oh, that's creepy. Must be something, you know, some type of energy or something attached to it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, from that perspective yeah i will say that you know i think you could say all of us have the ability to do that i think but i think women more than men because women pick up on all that stuff 
Yeah. That's why, you know, a running story with me is this one lady picked up this Indian statue. She brought it home, had all kinds of activity and everything. She goes, but John, when I was holding it in the antique store, I, I felt creeped out. And I go, then what did you buy it for? If you were creeped out, don't buy it. I, you use that six cents for everything else. Use it for that, too. <laughs> 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 yeah, I would. And if I'm creeped out by something, I'm walking all on by. That's for sure. <laughs> well, um, what was I, I was going to ask you something, then I got sidetracked. Um, or my brain. I have ADHD, so it's like it's a you know. Uh, oh, you know, I was going to ask you something. What what is? I don't know. If favorite is the right word, but what is your most prized or favorite item you have? Probably, and it really shouldn't be, but. The one thing that uh, means the most to me is this little virgin statue. Now, if you look, the hands are burnt off of it, melted off of it, not burned. Now, this comes from the haunting in Connecticut. Oh. When, okay, when the, I don't feel that it's anything negative that's associated with it or anything. I mean, it's just a plastic statue. But anyways, the day the exorcism was being done, there were three Roman Catholic priests. They had, you know, put these different icons out throughout the house. And one of the priests went to go retrieve this out of the living room and he screeched. And we all ran in there and he goes, look at, look at the, you know, Mary statue. The hands are melted off of it. No, nobody wanted to touch it. Nobody. Yeah. So it got left there. But anyways, everything got done. Um, and uh, it was like weird because maybe about a year or two years later, I remember all of, I was with my uncle and everything like that. And he looked at me, he goes, do you got the Mary statue? And I go, no, I thought you had it. He goes, no. And you know, I never thought too much of it because after everything got said and done with the haunting in Connecticut, Carmen and Al moved down South and they didn't want to get involved with anything until the kids were all grown. So anyways, uh, years, years later, after her last son, fin her son finished up school and everything, she got involved. And that's when they did the documentary and the movie. And uh, Carmen says, I got something for you. Her and I were out lecturing and she pulled it out of her pocketbook, unwrapped this piece of paper. And there was the Mary statue. I said, all these years, we often wondered what happened to that. She goes, no, I kept it all these years. She goes, now you got you got your own haunted uh barn on your property so you can have it and put it in there and i said well i call her auntie Car that's my auntie carm and she's Aww. my and that's my southern bell so <laughs> i i've always called her my southern bell ever since we met and everything because when she starts talking you know uh and again it's it's a cool thing but anyhow that's probably one out of the maybe 15 16 different things that means something to me value wise i don't really care it doesn't right. or you know right. i have personal uh different things from uh associations with things that my uncle had given me and i don't even bring them out to the forefront or anything of that nature because they're things that are personal and just happen to mean uh you know mean something to me right so, so you were you were involved with the the haunting in connecticut yes okay yeah uh, Nine and a half weeks. Wow, that's crazy. Um, okay. And I mean, I can't imagine, you know, I know a lot of people that who have said that they've experienced stuff and it literally, you know, changes the way they look at life after, mm -hmm. they, after they have some of the, I'm sure if I was there and the Statue of Mary, the hands are burned off or melted off, you know, that's literally, I can't even imagine witnessing that firsthand and see and seeing or at least knowing that that occurred whether or not you saw it or not but knowing that occurred somehow unexplainable an unexplainable phenomena you know it would definitely keep me up for a few days like see that's what intrigues me with our yeah. field is that we we have too many unexplains yes you know there, there isn't anything i haven't seen or witnessed i mean it you know and people will often you know say that to me well you know what does that do? I go, it alters you. You know, okay, you see a person levitate. You might have heard stories about a person getting levitated or, you know, and stuff like that. Those are stories. But when you see it, that changes you because now it's a part of your reality because yeah. you experienced it. Now, the levitation was only four inches up uh, off of a chair, out of a chair. 
but it occurred and it happened. And it was just like two or three days later, I just went, wow. You know, I'm one of those types of people when anything's occurring and happening, she, you know, uh, I don't, I, I don't react right away. Two or three days later, I'll go, holy shit. I just, <laughs> you know, and I'll call everybody up and they'll go, Johnny, it's three days late. And now everybody's, a lot of the people are used to, especially, you know, my spiritual friends and everything. And I'll go, did we really see that? Did that really happen? Yeah. And they're going, yeah. You know, yeah. And, 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 but that's the way I register with a lot of things. And um, again, you know. Yeah. So. No, I, I think, I think that that's, I mean, I, I totally don't. I mean, your first, what was your first case you were involved in? You know, was that on the negative side of things? Um, you know, did that make you that make that brought that that brought you more you were more intrigued or you were like you know how did how did you feel after experiencing what was your first if you can remember i mean i know it's been but i mean you know, it's uh, it's uh, it's so sad kiddo some of the some of the most monumental things that unless right. somebody triggered actually one of my buddies yeah, yeah. recently just triggered my memory about a case 30 years ago and i go i don't remember any of that and he goes Man, he goes, how could you forget all that? I go, dude, so many cases I've been involved with that, you know, a lot of times you just, you just don't. Anyways, I, I think what was one of the most monumental things that I took a step back from and I took a look at it was a, uh, I went to go, I was hanging with Ed and Lorraine and they had a couple of other people with them. I just had going with them. And they were doing uh, a spirit communication. And at that point in time, I don't know to this day, you know, I remember it. But Lorraine kept saying that it was very negative, but it didn't have nothing to do with the family. And we had all kinds of crazy activity going on. And, you know, some bizarre things started happening in there. And I remember it. I can't remember the, the where the hell we even were at this point now. Right. right, right. I, I remember it. And it made me start thinking. I remember... You know, on the ride home, the car, we were all very quiet. And I remember we went to get out of the car and I turned and looked at them. And I go, what the F happened in that house? <laughs> and it's all as Lorraine did was bust out laughing. And she goes, that was a haunting deer. Oh. Like that. And my uncle goes, ah, he just starts laughing. And I'm like, where am I getting involved with here? You know, right? But. You know, again, that that was an opening uh, to some of the stuff that got involved with. I mean, to witness something that that was way up on the scale, that would, you know, be the haunting in Connecticut. Because yeah. there were three three different experiences I had in there with what we would refer to as something fully formed. Right. And that's what, 30, 35 years ago, I think it is, somewhere around yeah. there, yeah? But I so, can't imagine something like that being a distant memory. Like to me, that would be like burned in my brain going through that, you know? See, I mean, with me, with me, I try to, when I walk away from something, I walk away from it. Right. And I've always been told that's been one of my best. My uncle used to say that all the time too. He goes, that's one of your best assets, John. He said, you get, you, you just walk away from stuff. My, and when I say that to my wife, she goes, no, you're a typical guy with selective memory. So <laughs> I don't know. You know but that, that makes sense though, because I mean, from what I've learned, and again, I don't deal with negative cases or anything like that, but what I've learned is that, you know, you want to let go of that. You don't want to hold on to it. You don't want it to, 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 you know, you know, swimmer around inside your brain and give it much thought like you kind of want to just mm -hmm. you know cut cut the core let it go so to speak if you will you know mm -hmm. um so that is that is good especially you know that's primarily what you dealt with you know right yeah. am, am i right yeah um, just can i just ask this question um so i don't know how to say this without oh maybe. just say it Okay, so <laughs> with all of the all of the entertainment we have now, right, and and it all focuses on stuff being demonic and negative and this and that. Um, in your career, 
and I, and I granted, I, I understand like, that's what you mostly dealt with, but was it, is it that, is it that much? Is there that much around where, you know, all these shows and all these people and, you know, the YouTubes and stuff like that, like everywhere they go, there's something demonic or something negative. I mean, is, is that, do you find that to be true or did you? No. no. Thank you. Uh, uh, okay. Um, now, he, again, coming from my training and looking at a lot of this, you know, I remember so many different cases we would do that were human spirit cases that were ab absolutely dynamite, dynamite stories. And I remember one day I was sitting and we were going back and forth and I go, you know, my uncle, I, I go, you never talk about all these cases, you know, with some of these beautiful things that we've experienced with human spirit. And he goes, nobody wants to hear it. And I go, well, what do you mean? He goes, you sit there and start talking about these ghosts and, and Casper the ghost and things like that. He goes, people are going to get up and walk out. You say possession and demon and everybody tunes right in. And he's right. He's to this day, and that's 40 years ago that man said that to me. He goes, You could do a whole lecture on human spirits, the intervention of the divine, the angelic, and everything like that. He said, People will say they like it and everything like that. He said, But you start talking about a person being possessed or demons and Satan coming up through the floorboards, people are going to pay attention to you. That's and crazy. it's very, and it's a very, very true, true statement. But you know, the, the cases, you know, because I believe very strongly in the angelic and the angels. I have no, no doubt. But uh, do they walk around, you know, with these fluffy wings and a halo? No. Angels are nothing like that. They're very big and they're so bright. And they, okay, again, th th this is how I perceive it and look at it is they come in, kick ass, do their job, and they're out. Yeah. This is how it works. And I've seen it happen several times where, you know, these things occur and it, it's just mind blowing because then afterwards it makes you take that step back and realize that there's so much we don't understand and so much that, you know, we, we try to comprehend and register because people will often say to me, well, you know, you, you have all the answers for everything. No, I don't. Right. I just am more accepting because there's so much I we don't know. And as we move forward, you know, I got to I'll honestly say over the past good, you know, 10 some odd years with all the equipment and the different things all these guys come up with, it's helping to document so much, you know, so much is getting recorded and so much is, you know, there. But the one thing that, you know, again, I always tell everybody, because when somebody calls and says, you know, I'm working on a case, but I got no scientific, you know, evidence. What scientific evidence? What are you, what are you telling me? And right. I go, well, what do you mean, John? I got no EVPs. I got no, you know, hot cold spots or anything. And I go, that doesn't mean you're not dealing with a haunting. Right. Okay. Right. And I go, okay, that's good that you're using all the equipment, document everything. Because in the future, we might be able to use that. And they'll go, what do you mean? I go, if you can't chart something and get repeatability, it's not scientifically proven out. Right. That's a fact. Now, right. I, I, you know, I come from an engineering background in the pharmaceutical. So think of that now, you know, used yeah. to make a, and now I'm out chasing freaking Casper the ghost. Go figure. But, <laughs> you know, it, it, it's amazing to look at all that and everything. So, and I'm very, honest with everybody three quarters of the equipment i'm very intrigued by it i look at it i wouldn't even know how to turn half of this freaking stuff on anymore i'm with you i'm with you so i watch everybody else do it and i'm very intrigued i'm very very interested in all of it and, and the different things that get proven out and some of the activity and some of the things that get recorded that's the best part of our work that they're doing that but yeah. don't don't rule out the original <laughs> intent and purpose of going into a location is yeah. to find out what's happening. <clears throat> yeah. And, and, and that's the thing, you know, and then it's funny cause I watch some of these videos I'll catch, you know, where people are in places and they're thinking it's a demon, it's demonic. And I'm thinking, man, if I was a demon and somebody was like portraying me this way, I would be mad. I'm like, that's not how I do it. 
like that's not what i do <laughs> you know well um, you know what what a key factor you know with this now i'm going to share this and i i usually won't go too deep into my demonology work but usually when the demonic is infiltrating or doing what it needs to do for its bidding and everything else, you know, it, it's going to be quiet and it's going to be reserved because it doesn't want to get exposed at that point in time right. until it gets its foothold. So when somebody's running into a place and screaming, ah, Satan's coming up through the floor right away. I'm like, it doesn't go that way. It doesn't usually happen that way. Right. So you have to, you know, uh, take that step back, but also to, you know, over the over the past several years between the tv shows and all the blogging and all these other things i mean it, it, it it's unbelievable did i ever think we'd ever see this no i yeah. honestly did not ever right. think we'd see it to the point of you know where it is now with all the shows and right. you know the different things it's ama it's amazing the yeah. acceptance of it yeah no it is i mean i mean even i drove past uh there's a house in my town and it was up for sale. And it literally, I know this was like a meme going around on Facebook, but it literally said not haunted. You know what I mean? So I mean, <laughs> I'm like, well, I, I would skip that house. right? <laughs> yeah, I'll, here's a good thing that I'll, sh again, I don't usually talk about this. I have several very, very good friends that are realtors. Yes. And when the, sometimes they'll do listings and they'll book things, I'll get a telephone call, John A., would you come over here? And I'll go, what? You know, what do you want me to tell you? And they're going, if there's shit in this house, I am not listing it. I don't want no part of this, right? And I'm like, oh, I don't like to do that. You know, because the poor people are trying to sell their house. The realtor don't want nothing to do with it. I know realtors that there are certain houses they won't even go into them. Yeah. They, they, they won't even show them. They want no part of them. Yeah. They, they get, the, they, and they feel like they're going to get jinxed. Yeah. If they, you know, so it's weird how all that works and how, how it plays out. I, mean, I, so, think it's, I always said, like, I would, I would always like, I used to say like, oh, I should work with a realtor. Right. And do and this only happened when I recently was looking for a house. And, and I was like, you know, we could call it home is where the haunt is. And like, you work with a realtor, you just go into houses and, and see what you can find or whatever. And, you know, because there's a market out there for people that want to buy haunted houses now. Um, because I, when we were looking for houses, I, I started to get confused of what we looked at. And when we were trying to like, you know, decide what house we liked, whatever. So I started to video as we went through the houses so I could remember. And we, we went through this really old Victorian house, which I loved. And um, I was walking, you had to, I opened up a door to walk up the steps and um, I went back and I was watching the video. And when I did that, as I was getting to the top of the steps, you hear, close the door. It was a whisper, but it was, there was an EVP and they were like, Say. come shut the door, like close the Say. door. Yeah. <laughs> so I, yeah. so I texted my realtor. I was like, dude, I was like, ask the people that own that place. Cause they, they're living in Florida. They were just trying to sell the house. I was like, ask him if I can, I'll rent a night there. Please let me investigate. He's like, what are you talking about? I send him the clip. He's like, I'm not going back in that house. You're out of your mind. Like, what is that? They were totally freaked out. Um, so yeah okay i just clicked the, uh, all right i was wondering why i was i wasn't seeing any of the comments oh. now i'm sitting now i'm seeing them there's a lot there's i was lot. seeing them pop up on the screen when they would come up but not on the side wow okay right. cool so cool, cool, cool. Yeah. <laughs> there we go yeah <laughs> okay did i investigate the amityville house yes. no but Actually, uh, Pam uh, is just asking, Pam Barry's just asking that. That's another one of my very dear, dear friends okay. for many, many years. Um, but um, and I'm, I'm doing her event this year and I'm excited. I know, I'm so excited. I am so excited. It's going to be a blast being at the Eisenhower and, you know, people get your tickets. Come on out. We'll have a blast. Anyhow, um, with that, she was asking about the Amityville house. Did I do the original investigation in there? No, but I was extremely fortunate that I lectured several times with George mm -hmm. on uh, Penn State campuses. I did a couple of conferences with him. And, you know, I always do other information, again, that never came to the forefront. That was their choice on it. Now, I'm going to share a few of the things because uh, uh, the two Lutz 
boy or, or whatever the uh, quarantino a bit, i know they don't go under lutz anymore um yeah. Uh, again, you know, had revealed and let some of the information out, you know. Now, did George know about the the, the murders and everything? Yes. Everybody. His grandfather's company owned the surveying company that surveyed the piece of property when it was you know, being listed. He used it as a good bargaining tool to be able to buy it and get the price knocked down. So, yes, and they lived in the area. So how were they going to not know about it? Okay. Right. Right. <laughs> now, yeah, I think that the whole country knew about it, right? I mean, right. That was, big, that was a big thing. Yeah. Now, did the house get moved? Yes. Could it have been moved on to an, quote, ancient Indian burial ground? Yeah, because that's another running thing with me, with my humor. When somebody calls me up and they go, my house is built on an ancient Indian burial ground. I go, yeah, all our houses are. And I go, what? And I go, all our houses are. I said, they were here millions of years before us, so they're buried all over the place. So, but again, it, 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 the house was moved. There were several murders that took place in there by DeFeo. DeFeo was involved with a lot of things. The family was aware of it. Do I think that there was uh, an influence that caused some of that to transpire within the De DeFeo family? Yeah, because there's things about the DeFeo family that never came out. So again, you know, and it's not my place to let stuff out. That's up to the families to do that. I will never do that. But again, you know, um, a lot of this stuff was very well known. Now, uh, George was into practicing. He went into meditations. He would do different things. I was aware of this, not from, you know, uh, the two uh, uh, the boys, especially Chris, because I knew Chris well, telling me I already had known about some of it from George right. and from some of the stuff Ed would tell me about it. So do I think Amityville, per se, was a true haunting? Yes. Do I think there's stuff that occurred in that house that none of us are ever going to know? Yes. Again, it's one of those great mysteries, but I did not do the original uh, investigation in there. Yeah. You know, the funny thing, too, is Ed and Lorraine didn't do the original investigation. Right. There were several other people that were involved with the, um, Hans Holzer, Alexandra's uh, dad. Now, Alexandra Holzer and I are very good friends. Mm -hmm. And the running joke with her and I is that Hans Holzer and my uncle, they hated each other with a passion, hated each other. And I go, boy, can you see them now? You and I ended up becoming good friends. <laughs> and her and I bust out laughing over that. Yeah. But, you know, again, you know, it's, it's the nature of the whole thing. So when a lot of times when people say to me, they think it was all made up and everything, I go, the books and the movies were on Amityville. Just like they are with a lot of the other movies that are out there. Right. I'm used to it. This has been going on since day one when movies have uh, been created. And, you know, I would hear my aunt and uncle, you know, getting ripped to shreds behind some of the movies from years prior before the Conjuring series would come out. So, yeah. again, it, it, Hollywood is Hollywood. If there's any paranormal supernatural movie that's out there that is... 50% of factual things that occurred, that's amazing. That yeah. would be amazing. Right, right, right. Which so, is, what is your favorite paranormal or any type of movie in that genre, whether it be, you know, movies, and I don't know what the, the genre would be for the movies like The Reich or this and that, or movies like, you know, The Entity or movies like, you know, I, I'm, I'm old school, so I like the old school movies. More, you know, like the others and what lies beneath and yeah. you know, dragonfly, you know, I like oh, all the, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, again, with um, in today's um, level of movies, believe it or not, I love The Conjuring One. I just love it. It's, it was, yeah, yeah, the very first one, you know, the effects, the scariness and everything. I know so much of it is a disaster with, you know, them being on factual things. I love the nun movies, the two mm -hmm. nun movies that came out. You know, uh, again, I can relate to some of uh, the different aspects to some of the parts that uh, tie in with that. But one of them that, that's uh, pretty much on course with certain things that I related to more than anything was the exorcism of Emily Rose. That was a. I mean, what the priest went through, what the attorney went through, these things happen. 
yeah. they occur. I mean, again, it's blown out of proportion, and that's another one. Everybody thought she died during the last exorcism, and that did not happen. Did she starve they, to death? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the, the two priests, the mother and father, were charged with manslaughter in that. But yeah. she actually willed herself to die. She didn't die during the exorcism. But a lot of, a lot of people didn't know that until, you know, uh, it started coming out and they did the research and uh, different things and um, it, it came to the forefront. Yeah. But um, again, you know, it, it's it, it, it's it, it's wild with a lot of that stuff. Now, yeah. what what is my all time all time favorite? Are the golden oldies from the fifties? Oh, do I the haunted house on the hill? Uh, you know, I love those old ones. Yeah, and uh, I get, yo, yo, oh, you'll love this. I had met a relative at a gig that I was doing, right? And he comes up and he's talking to me and everything. He goes, "John, we're related." And I go, oh, "Here we go again, right?" So he starts <laughs> he starts coming out with all this different information. And I just stood there and I looked at him and I go, there's no way he can know a lot of this, right? So he's going back and forth. Anyways, the reason I'm talking about it is then all of a sudden he blurs out and he goes, did you know Vincent Price was part of our family? And I went, what? I go, that's one of my favorite freaking you know, people. And now you're telling, he goes, yes. And he was explaining it to me, how it all tied in, how it went way back to during the colonies and everything. I looked up some of the information he gave me and I went, Holy shit. I go, I never knew all this. And it was on my grand grandmother and grandfather's side on the other side of the family where it all died. Anyways, who would ever think we were related to Vincent Price? Listen, that's awesome because I, I, I got the biggest kick out of that. That's awesome. Thriller is my favorite song only because of his, his, his the ending. That yeah. I mean, I mean it's it's great. I love it. That is awesome. Yeah. Ooh, what a cool, what a cool little interesting fact. <laughs> I, I, you know, I don't know if it's a hundred percent true. I can't, I don't know. I don't have any, you know, physical, uh, stuff to, uh, back it. But he said that to me and I, and he, all the other stuff he was coming up with. And I'm like, yeah, I said, you're blowing my mind here, dude. <laughs> wow. That is, that is like, so that's cool. What a cool, yeah. what a cool relative. Yeah. Know? Well, again, too, like I said, I just started some of the names that he just rattled off to me, I started researching and everything. And I went, this is going right back to the freaking, when it was the colonies. Wow. I said, I thought we on both sides of my family. We were just here a couple of generations. And he goes, Oh no, John, that's yeah. how he explained it to me. And I went and looked and went, wow. Wow. That is so cool. <laughs> that is so cool. Yeah. Um, Okay, um, I won't answer this, but you can. Um, what was your most shocking experience? Well, I think you answered that though. You said with the with the I guess when you were doing uh, the haunting in Connecticut with with the statue, would that be? There, um, it's always difficult. Um, I think the haunting in Connecticut uh, brought more and actually verified more to me that there are the full materializations of things that transpired on a dark side. Um, I, I, I'm trying, you know what, one of my most shocking one, and it's the craziest thing. It was Debbie and Larry Eldward and myself. It was years back. And this person had uh, contacted uh, Father Larry to uh, uh, have uh, uh, an exorcism done. So I went to go help them. And the guy was uh, very influential. He sat there. He was doing the exorcism and the deliverance prayers over him and everything. And his eyes changed. They turned into these reptilian looking eyes. All right. I'm watching this and it's going back and forth. He didn't move. He didn't flinch. Nothing happened. He got done and he was blinking and his eyes went back to normal. So I'm like, oh. I, this dude got these weird contact lenses in, right? That's what I'm thinking. Right. So anyways, so what do I do after that? I get, I got a couple of friends that are eye doctors. I call them up. I go, can you roll those contact lenses down? They go, no. They go, you cannot roll them under and then push them back up like that by opening. I went, holy shit. Like that, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, so then I'm talking to a couple of my other 
mutual uh, friends about it and uh, a couple of clergy friends. And I went, I still can't believe I saw that. Wow. I said, I'm still blown away by that, that I, and they, and what I got confirmed by several different spiritual people was that he was what you would refer to as pure, true possession. Wow. He was truly 100%. So he didn't need to act anything out. He didn't need to waste his energy. I said, well, so all he did was look. And I said, he had a grin. Do you know, every one of them said the same thing to me. They go, you didn't stare into his eyes, did you? And I went, no. And they go, that would have been the worst thing you could have ever done. And I'm like, why? They go, you might have fought. He was that strong and that powerful. Wow. I said, now that freaked me out. Yeah. Because I was like. All right. And I had all these you know, spiritual people telling me that that's just priests, but other ones too, saying, don't do that. Because then, you know, I said, well, I look, but I didn't continuously stare as I don't do that with any, you know, anybody we're working with on that level. Yeah. But anyways, that, that, that's, 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 that's that you're getting a couple, you're getting a couple of stories out of me. I usually don't talk about. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thank you. <laughs> um, let me see here. And some other questions, but you know, while while I'm um I'm doing this, um, Gina Gina Bankston was on. I don't think she's on anymore, which that stinks because I saw something up here. She was talking about to ask you about the exorcism you were involved in, but I think that was where you that was the the Connecticut haunting in Connecticut. Um, I don't know. She said, "Where did it go?" Oh, she said, "Where was it?" Here it is. Ask him about the exorcism he was a part of. Uh, it depends on which exorcism she's talking about, because yeah. there's been a lot of them I've been involved with over the course of years. Yeah. Because I, I don't know. It could be one of them I could have been talking about when I was lecturing or something at one point in time. So I'm not quite sure which one she's asking about. Um. Let me see here. And there is another one. This is a good one. Uh, do you have any kind of protection from these haunted objects? I believe very strongly. And when any of my spiritual friends come over, I make them work. You know, whether it's a bind, binding, prayers, you know, humming, chanting, anything on a positive, you know, come on in, do your thing, kumbaya. I'm a happy camper with all that. <laughs> now, <laughs> with me, you know, I, I go by... My Catholicism, uh, you know, I will do my prayers. I will use my salt. I will use my holy water. And I have a few things set up that I do with these items before I even bring them in. Mm -hmm. So, again, uh, for me, that that's how I go about it. But I love it, you know, when I have, you know, uh, one of my Native American friends or something come over. And when they start doing their mojo and doing the different things, it is the coolest freaking thing in the world to watch. It yeah. really is. It, it, it's amazing. So, Did you ever feel a difference, like a shift, like, you know, from, you know, when you first bring something in, then when you have people come over and do their thing, do you ever feel a shift in the energy in the, in the, in the place to, you know, where you feel, you feel pretty good that what they did is kind of binding it to where it's at and you're good. I would say I, I will feel lighter. You could feel, it could feel a little bit lighter, but, what amazes me about the, you know, with a lot of the, um, uh, when people come in or, you know, d people will pick up on different things and get different things. And, you know, I'll be like, oh, okay. Because 99% of the time, I just don't feel or sense anything. Mm -hmm. But I'm very desensitized to a lot of stuff now. Yeah. It takes a lot. You go, yeah. If you call me up and start telling me, you know, okay, yeah, we'll do it again. If you tell me your house is levitating and spinning and Dorothy just flew out the front door, I'm over there. I'm over there in a heartbeat because I haven't seen that. So again, it takes <laughs> it takes it takes a lot for me to you know what I mean to really you know I understand it, I believe it, I know they're going through it, but like I said, there when you see a lot of things and you experience a lot of things, you it, it you view it differently. It's the best way I could put it to you. Yeah, you just view things a lot differently. Like, can, can, <clears throat> so the, the, I don't know how to ask this, but like, we imagine a haunted house having like, for lack of better description, 
a ghost walking around that we can't see, right? Mm -hmm. couldn't, couldn't a haunted house also be in the same category as a haunted object or an item because the house is just that? Okay. Now, there's two, two different categories to put things into. Because people will say to me, you know, I got a possessed house. Uh, not necessarily. The only thing that could be possessed is people and animals. Mm -hmm. Property, land, and items have more of what we would call an attachment, you know, uh, to it. Because it can't actually be possessed. Okay. So, again... Um, if you're dealing with a ritual site or something of that nature, again, it's something I'm going to view and look at a little bit differently than I would with possession with a person or something mm -hmm. uh, or animals. So, no, I look at both of them differently and handle those types of things differently. Yeah. Okay. Wait a minute. Animals. Possessed animals? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Really? Animals can be, yeah. Well, if you uh, stop and uh, think about it, that. you know, uh, many, many years ago, it's, uh, you know, alleged that, um, you know, Jesus actually cast out the uh, demons into the swine and they ran into the ocean. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, have you ever dealt with a possessed animal? Actually, a pig. Really? <laughs> that's another. <laughs> That's another whole crazy Oh my story. gosh, how the hell? Anyways, heck? this woman had a pig. I don't even, I, I don't know. I'm going to call it Arnold. I don't remember what his freaking name was. But the thing was treated like a child, a part of the family. It had its own bedroom in the house. Oh my All God. right. Anyways, we'd go around and everything. The pig hated me. The pig didn't like me. Oh, well, for and, a reason. Yeah. You know, I kept telling my uncle, I go, that freaking pig don't like me. I go, it starts snorting and everything else at me when it looks at me. So, Anyways, we were there one night and we went, we were talking to the woman and we were explaining to her that father was going to be over in the morning and the, she would tell the pig to go up into its bedroom and it would do it. It would go up into its bedroom. But anyway, the pig, the pig got upset and it came down. It was standing in the hallway going, <sighs> and it was looking right at me and I was with a couple of the other researchers and I went, that effing pig is going to come after me. <laughs> oh my gosh. And it did. It charged right down the hallway. I jumped up, up onto the kitchen table. Oh my so, gosh. yes, I have dealt with a possessed pig. Hey, <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, you know, there were three of us there that night that happened, and everybody said the same thing. They went, that was too freaky not to believe. Like, that's got to be difficult, though, to because usually, with like, I'm, I'm assuming, I've like, again, I've never dealt with anything like that but a person you know with a person you're you're talking to that person and they're understanding what's going on in your t you know what i mean as much as they can at, the, at that particular moment you know so with an animal how do you they can't tell you i mean animal. you know yeah um I, when it comes into animals and if there's anything wrong and something is transpiring most of us have that sense to us that there's something wrong right they got a way of letting their you know uh, owners know something is wrong because the running joke without uh uh you know throughout the years and i really shouldn't say a running joke but we always say the best investigators are dogs cats and birds right because they'll react immediately right you know that's part of their senses they use that sixth sense to be able to help protect themselves right right so here again you know when, when something does occur with a pet or something like that, especially if I got spiritual people with me, I'll just tell them, you know, uh, can you help? You know, out. Yeah. That's help you do your prayers or do something just in case there is something with that. And mm -hmm. then if the person calls me back and goes, you know what? My pet calmed down. I go, well, you know, what got done, hopefully helped them. Do you, do you find though that sometimes it comes from the owner or somebody living in the house? Like, when it comes to the pets, it's very difficult. To, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah, wow. that that's a that's a difficult one. Yeah. Unless you know they're in an environment or right. You know, there's something transpiring in the house, and there's something occurring. You know, it's a good possibility. Yeah. Um, I want you to tell everybody. You know, I, I um, you know, before we go, um, the some of the places you're going to be coming up. Um, and what do you got going on? Um. 
you know, is there anything in the works or anything going on? Um, well, uh, yeah, mainly, uh, mainly with me, oh, I do, uh, still doing a few of my, uh, college and university lectures. I oh. do a few this time of the year. Then, you know, uh, we got a lot of the conventions coming up, looking very forward to being down in Gettysburg at the, the bash New Jersey Paracon. I do that every year, Michigan Paracon. I do that every year. This year I'm going to be doing the Ohio state one. I mean, I think everybody in their brothers book, booked on that one also. Yeah. So, you know, the, the, you know, those are, uh, the uh, major ones and um, there's several, you know, smaller events that I do here in between with everything. I don't like being out every weekend. I don't like yeah. it. Unless the, you know, I'm kind of, you know, to the point now where if I have to go out every weekend to do something, you know, it, it's just, uh, I don't want to do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, it's funny you were saying the colleges because uh, Megan says when Ed and Lorraine talked at my university each year, they would start uh, with some of the light and cute ghost stories, and then it got very dark. <laughs> so, yeah, she, uh, I, um, and I, you know, this was another thing that I found out about them that I didn't know about, um, is that Steve Gonzalez from Ghost Hunters, I had him on a couple weeks ago, and he was talking about how he eventually got to do some stuff with them, you know what I mean? And I guess they came to his to his school as well. That was when he first saw them. Uh, there's a universe. Okay. Wait, I'm, I have to stop and think because yeah, Steve and I are uh, good friends and I could still remember back in the day he had gone to one of their lectures and I believe it was at a, at a, a university. Yeah. And again, too, you know, he had talked about that later on when him and I had met and, you know, because he always used to call me Mr. Zaffis. I said, you freaking call me Mr. Zaffis one more time. And it was like, <laughs> it, that was so hard for him to break that. And he goes, I still remember, you know, they were there and you were with them. Yeah. And I, he was, t I, I can't remember wh where it was or it was someplace here in, in the Connecticut area, if I remember correctly. Yeah. 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 He, he he talks about it in his book and he was saying about how he, if he'd have, if he'd have, know, if he'd have thought that he was ever going to be working with the you and you know what I mean? This and that. He was like, I, he's like, I never would have believed it. Um, you know, what? Well, one of the coolest things is about Steve is every year he'll say to me, he goes, John, and I go, yes, yeah, Steve. He goes, I wait for you to post your Christmas pictures. Me too. He I'm goes, say I, that. He goes <laughs> and I looked at him and I went, what? He goes, you put everybody in the Christmas spirit with those pictures. He goes, you turn into a little kid with that. I go, yes, I do. I do. I do. And and, and I just, it was last year I was telling him, I go, yeah, but what makes me even more happier now? And he goes, what's that? I go, we got six little ones back in the family now. Our That's nieces so awesome. and nephews are all having the kids, yeah. so the babies are back around and everything. So, That's so yeah. awesome. Yeah. So, but and he goes every year. I wait for that. And I went, oh my gosh, what a cool thing! To get. And you know, I just grabbed them and hugged them, and I went, oh my gosh, you just made my day. He goes, yeah. John, everybody waits for that every year. I'm telling and, you. <laughs> so I just laugh, but I, you know, it's a cool yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. I I was just gonna say that, you know, how, how much I love all your pictures you put up. I, I like I follow it. I you start it and you start I mean you and I you both love you and your wife both love doing it together and I, I just love that. I love Oh that's that that's you know, yeah. again both of us are home now because you know, again, well she still uh does, you know, we both both have our other little jobs that we do, but you know, it's a cool it, it's a cool thing. You know, that we do it. And the running joke is that freaking tree. <laughs> we, we got that freaking tree. She gets so aggravated with me if I go to decorate it or anything because I clump stuff. <laughs> and she goes, don't touch the freaking tree. Don't touch the tree. Don't touch the tree. Now, the funny thing is this year I was home this one day, right? And I'm looking at the tree because she, she, she does a little bit of, you know, yeah. it's, a big, it's a big monstrous tree, right? I said, I'm going to decorate that freaking thing. Right. Because she was out working that day. Right. So I went and I'm looking and I'm organizing it and putting them all on it and everything. And I, and I worked on it for like seven freaking hours. Right. So she came in and we were sitting down to eat and everything. She looked over at the tree. She looked back at me. She got up from the table and she went in. She's looking all around the tree and everything. She came back down and sat down. And I go, well, she goes, you didn't clump anything. <laughs> 
<laughs> because I never thought about it until so she kept telling me. She goes, you put three or four ornaments on one branch and it looks ridiculous. And I thought about it and I go, all right, well. But I gave it a shot this time, helping her this year on the tree, and it worked out kind of good. Which is, it, it, it's I love it, but you you know I I don't see the same affinity for Halloween unless I miss that. Like I see, uh, the, yeah. I I miss doing it, but I don't do Halloween because there's no kids here. Yeah, we live in a, in a cul-de-sac, and we're all the way down at the end. Kids don't come to the house. All, all the kids are grown up and everything, so I don't usually put any of my. You wouldn't believe the amount of Halloween decorations I have because I'm out <laughs> lecturing. I'm usually at universities, yeah, colleges, yeah. especially especially the last couple of weeks of the month of October. I'm just like, yeah. you know, out on the road. I yeah. mean, it used to be September to November, but I I, I don't want to do that anymore. Be out on the road. Yeah, that much, no, you know? I don't blame you. I mean, yeah. you know, especially doing for as long as you have, you know. Yeah, so I get you know again. Um, I, I cut back on that, but no, that's uh, that's my whole thing. And the running joke was this year because a lot of the kids were standing around and everything. I go, well, I go, you know, I just Cheryl and I are going to get to the point where we're not going to be able to do this anymore. And it was like everybody was freaking out and they go, "Is something wrong with Uncle Johnny? Something wrong with Uncle? Why, why is he saying that? Why is he saying that?" <laughs> and I busted out laughing. I go, well, you know what? I go, after a while, you get tired of doing all that stuff. <laughs> well, I don't think that the family would be the only ones upset about it. I think all of us see, you know, you know, getting everybody in the spirit. We would be like, what? No, you're not. No, you're not. We'll, we'll, all, we'll all assemble and go to your house and help you. No, we'll do it. We'll help you guys do it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Well, John, I literally have had you for an hour and 25 minutes already. And I, I literally thank you so much. Um, it was a pleasure. And, you know, one of my favorite guests I've had on. So I, I just I want to thank you so much for spending well, time with us. Um, and I look forward to seeing you soon. You know, looking forward to it. Thanks for having me on. It was a great show. We got to talk about stuff I normally don't talk about. Yeah, that's so cool. that's a cool. That's a good thing. Yeah, no, I That's love a good that. Thing. And I'm so glad to see, I, after I realized that was there, I didn't realize I wasn't logging on. I was trying to figure out, where is everybody? <laughs> right? yeah. that I hit it. I didn't. So glad to see everybody show up for you, for oh, your yeah. show. That's Look, great. Andy, Andy just reminded me of something really quick. I'm sorry. I know we were saying goodbye, but so they the, the, the theme is Christmas in July at the bash. So you're going to be, it's like you're going to be. Because they're going to decorate for Christmas. It's all kind of Christmassy stuff. So you're going to be, you're going to have an early Christmas. <laughs> that is the theme. Yes. Yep. We might have to take that a step farther. <laughs> I'm sure Pam would be all ears on that. <laughs> I, I'm going to get a phone call from her. Trust me, I will. She goes, what are you thinking? What are you up to? <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah, we love it. We love it. So, but no, I didn't know that. Yes, that's the theme. Christmas in July. Yep. Wait a minute. Yes, because the banner's like that, right? The banner has. Don't pay attention to me. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yep. 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 That so, is so cool. That is so. No, cool. that's gonna be that's that's gonna be awesome for you. You're gonna have an early Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Sounds good to me. Love it. John, I will. I'll let you go. Um, again, okay. I love you. Thank, Thank you. Thank so you. Same here, my friend, and. Good night, everybody. Thanks for having me on. Take care. Good night. Bye. Well, that was amazing. Thank you, everybody, for being so awesome. And uh, I did try to get to everybody's questions. And I think I mostly did. Um, but, yeah. So that was great. That was an awesome show. I was so happy he finally came on. Um, and when I say finally, I mean I finally was able to get up the the uh, courage to ask him to come on. And he was, he was just so amazing. You, you guys saw it. Um, so... I will catch you guys out next week. But again, thank you so much for joining me. And uh, I will see you guys next week. I do have a couple of cool guests coming up. Um, you know, the Wraith Chasers will be coming on. I got Tim Shaw coming on. I have like so many people coming on, coming up. I think I'm booked through April. So make sure you guys check all of it out. And uh, I love all my brewskis. Thank you guys. Mwah.